Um, so hello everyone. Uh, before we start, uh, I would like to inform everyone about the agenda today. Um, I will start with the general guidelines um, for the overall session to follow. And then I will be giving introduction of um, getting to know who's our guest of honor today and about their business, uh, which is um, we have Fatin from Topitin. And then we will move on to the main uh, sharing session where Fatin will share um, her entrepreneurship journey. And we will follow up with a Q&A where we'll be answering your pre-submitted questions and um, any questions in the chat. And last but not least, I will be closing um, by announcing our next StockK Talk session um, and also our current running program, which is Rise Online 2021. Um, please, uh, so for the guideline, um, just general guideline, please uh, stay muted and turn off your video when you join. If you have any question throughout the talk, feel free to leave them in the chat. We will be answering them in the Q&A session. And please uh, use respectful language in the chat. Thank you. So that's about it for the guideline. Thanks everyone for joining. My name is Farah and I'll be the host today. Welcome to Talkie Talks. Uh, Talkie Talks is a series of sharing sessions where small but mighty business owners share about their motivation to start their own business and the story behind the journey. This uh, sharing session is brought to you by RISE. Uh, we are a Malaysian a research and social outreach project that empowers uh, Malaysian youth to entrepreneurship. Uh, RISE is uh, supported by City Foundation. We believe that Entrepreneurship is not only for big startup, which uh, uses high tech, but also for small and mighty businesses. RISE aims to showcase stories and small local businesses that are persevering and still chasing their dream despite their circumstances. So without further ado, um, I am very happy to welcome our guest today. Uh, we have Fatin, uh, the founder of Topitin. Welcome to Talk Talk, Fatin. We are very honored. Hello. So happy to be here. Hi, Fatin. Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> so, Fatin, can you start off by introducing um, to the audience briefly about your business, Topitin? Hello, everyone. I'm Fatin. I am the owner of Topitin. So, Topitin is a hat brand run by me and also my mom. Um, we sell handmade bucket hats in various quirky patterns, um, mostly batik. Our aim is to keep the batik tradition alive. So although batik has its unique design, some people don't really appreciate them. They just think, oh, kain batik, this is what people wear just to do house chores, something like that. So we want to change that by, um, we want to change that mindset by combining fashion and also tradition in a piece of accessory. Mm. Yeah. Thank you so much for the introduction. So if um, any of you are interested to learn more or to find out more about their products, uh, feel free to check out their Instagram and also topitin.com. Right, so we'll move on. Um, I'm just curious, uh, I think Fatin, maybe you can start off with like the story behind Topitin name. <laughs> <laughs> um, Topitin, it actually means Topitin because my name is Fatin. So it's kind of like, um, Fatin, Stoppy, Tin, Stoppy, so Toppy, Tin. And like all the Fatins out there, we've all been called like Tin Cans at least once in our life. So that explains the logo of the brand as well. So yeah, <laughs> Toppy, <Tin. laughs> Yeah, I find it very, very quirky. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's and, different. Mm, yeah, definitely, definitely. And <laughs> I, I really, I really find it sort of like suits the... Um, because I would say the bucket hat was a trend, right? <laughs> yeah. And you sort of like combine the traditional batik with the current new trend. Yes, that's true. And, and also you sort of like make it um, reversible. Mm, yeah, so it's kind of like two in one. That's every yeah. Malaysian, every Malaysian dream, like buy one, free one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true, true. So you can suit the locals' needs also. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Were you a huge uh, bucket hat fan? Um, yeah, when I was little, I wear um, not bucket hats, but hats all the time. And uh -huh. I wear hats um, when I go out. Uh, like last year, I wear hats all the time because I wear tudong and I don't wear pins. So 
bucket hats are just really really useful for me. The cure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I hate pain, so hats are yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> and how about now? Are you still a big fan of hats? Yeah. I mean, I love I love my hat. I mean, I love the I love quirky patterns. And for bucket hat, since I love them, I don't really find them the quirky patterns outside. They all they usually sell like the plain ones and all. So yeah. That's true. Yeah. Mm. So I guess that sort of move on to my next question. What inspired you to start your own business? Um, honestly, I wouldn't say anything inspired me to start this. My business started completely out of the blue. Actually, it was unplanned. I was just making bucket hats for fun last year because I love doing like DIY stuff, looking through mm -hmm. DIY videos. And I made them just to sell them to my close friends and relatives. But then my friends and family told me that if I were to start a hat brand, it could be a success. So I just tried making a business account and hunt for fabrics and materials. And Alhamdulillah, so far, my brand is doing fine. Yeah, <laughs> actually made the bucket hat yourself. Yeah, because my mom has a background in sewing. She used to do baju kurungs and all. So she taught me how to like draw the templates, how to sew and everything. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, but that's actually the best way to test your market yeah. you didn't have the intention to start a business but because you started selling to your friends yes yes uh, they're like, and like a good a good accident yeah 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 that's a good accident <laughs> but you you said you um as far as i know uh you started your business um last year right yeah it was last year yeah during the pandemic yeah it was the first week of mco <laughs> wow <laughs> yeah and i was i was just like planning to do something productive you know so that that's why it all started ah i see and you were still um studying at that time right yeah i was studying at that time mm -hmm. so what were the challenges when you first started and like how did you overcome you know the studying the mco <laughs> the spontaneous i guess the the main challenge it would be like gaining customers and also engagement since I started this business like out of nowhere and I didn't have any professional business skills because I took design course in college. So I do have skills in Photoshop and Illustrator and stuff, but I didn't have any business skills. So it was definitely hard for me. So like when people say um, experience is the best teacher, that's like 100% true. I learned everything through experience. So when I receive a negative comment, a recommendation or etc. I just write them down and then discuss with my mom and then we just try our best to fix them as soon as possible for our customers. Mm. Would you say within this, um, since you started until now, um, you sort of has, um, have transformed in terms of how you would run your business in comparison to what you imagine when you- Yeah, it was, it's definitely out of my imagination. I did not expect it to be like this big. I was just expecting, I mean, I, it, it was initially like planned. I stopped doing this last year, like during December, like that, because I'm starting my internship this year. So yeah, but um, it turns out to be a success. So I just decided to continue doing it and I have no regrets. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> no regrets. <laughs> Keep moving forward. But I think, I think you, you sort of have this um, positive, energy and sort of like what an entrepreneur should be like right because you you take negative feedback and you turn it into a yes um, yes everyone should do that everyone should do that yeah yeah instead of like feeling down and like yeah oh. we shouldn't be like the sad of feeling salty or whatever we just should take it in a positive matter yeah 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 how was the feeling though when you first um get the first positive feedback or first negative feedback? Oh my god, the first positive feedback was so amazing, especially from like uh, coming from a stranger. It was like, oh my god. <laughs> but like then um for the negative comment, uh yeah, it made me really like I mean not sad, but it makes me want to become like a better person, a better seller for them just to um, make them satisfied, the customer. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. <laughs> so in a way, 
it makes up to the you know the positive wind over the negative true true i'm pretty sure you will still remember the first positive feedback right until now oh yes oh my god <laughs> If, if I could print it and then frame it, I would do that. You should, you should. <laughs> That's the motivation to keep going. <laughs> yeah, now, so since we are still currently in the middle of this pandemic, and since you even started your business during the yeah. first pandemic, what were the challenges that your business faced during the pandemic? And how did you, I mean, I wouldn't say how you have to adopt because you started during the pandemic, but how yes. did you make it you know um i can't really say that i faced like a painful or terrible challenge during the pandemic because mm -hmm. out there there's so many people who experience like much worse um but i guess it's hard for me to like source for fabrics and also materials since uh, like purchasing them online is hard because i wouldn't know if they're good quality or the color is right so yeah that was a challenge for me it still is Oh, it still is. Yeah, because um, like my family, we don't usually like go out. Yeah. Because of the pandemic. So yeah. So how did you actually find a trusted um fabric supplier in the end? Um, the supplier we don't usually search for them. Sometimes they contact us directly. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah. it's just a matter of like trusting each other. Oh, so you actually never. Like, you didn't have to go out physically so much to... No, so oh. thank God. <laughs> so how, how sometimes, does it... Sometimes we go out, but not oh. like all the time. So they, they will actually send you samples of fabric or... Um, no, actually they send us like just pictures and then like videos. And because like my mom, like I said, she was a dealer. So she knows like <laughs> the types of fabric from the video. I was like, wow. wow. But yeah. <laughs> That really helps. That that's a definition of experience. <laughs> Bro. Wow, wow. So you can really tell just by looking, like, oh, this is top quality. Great A. My idol, my idol. <laughs> but so how is it like working with your mom? Um, I mean, I have to be honest, sometimes we do fight over like just random, random things, just small, small things. But so far, um, I love it. I love it so much. She sometimes just listens to my recommendations. I listen to hers and we just, we just find ways to like combine them, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in the end of the day, you, you, what did, but in the end of the day, when running a business with your mom, especially she, does she always has to be right? Or she would like listen to um, you? Not really. Sometimes she, sometimes she listens to me, but I don't know. I guess it's because I'm like, cause like I'm close with my mom. So we just kind of, it's just like an instant bond, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the ideal business partner. <laughs> <laughs> Bonding. <laughs> Teleporting. <laughs> they would have to say much. True, true. The mother-daughter teleport. Yeah, yeah. That's a nice duo. That's a, that's a really nice duo. <laughs> But so with the, with the, still with the uncertainty of the pandemic, you know, mm. present, how are you planning to um, help your business to grow from here? Um, I'm planning to like gain more engagement in my Instagram account and my social media. Um, since people nowadays like shop online because of the pandemic, because of the pandemic, I try not to like join a lot of bazaars and pop-up events and just focus on social media at the moment. So I try to produce like three or four designs per week and just post wow. more on Instagram, update my website and so on. Mm. Did you say three or four designs per week? Wait, what did I say? Like new design, three to four weeks, something like that. Oh, three to yeah. four weeks. Yeah. Uh, I you meant <laughs> what did I say? I'm so sorry. <laughs> No, I thought you said you produced three to four designs per week. Oh like, my god, like, no, I do not have that amount of time. I mean, I try to, I try to. Mm -mm. So what's the, what's, the, um, what's the creative process like from, you know, before designing and also, I mean, before making the hat? Do you, is it like you go by the fabric, depending on the fabric, or you go by sort of, yeah, the color options? 
sometimes we try to find like a theme or concept first and then we try to like um, do research on pinterest the graphics and all and we try to find the perfect uh, fabric we try to find them online and we ask others we ask our sources and all and then yeah we purchase them cut them sew them <laughs> mm -hmm. and yeah. usually um how long does this process take from um like from a to z or just the sewing itself no from the idea phase to completion usually uh like for example, our latest Mother's Day collection, um, we started planning it since January. So yeah, it took around around that. Wow. Hmm. Yeah. Sometimes it took shorter if the collection is pretty small. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah. Oh, interesting. <laughs> we we because uh yeah, I'm not familiar with um sort of like the hat making process. So I also wonder how long it should take. Yeah. <laughs> produce one hat <laughs> so or your your mom um i would uh i would assume is the main person that does all the um stitching or the yes um, yeah she's the she's the tailor i sometimes help with the cutting of the fabric and also the label sewing mm, 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 mm. nice teamwork <laughs> <laughs> So um, I guess it leads me to my next questions. Um, what is your business proudest achievement to date? Ooh, um, I guess it would be having my products displayed and sold at several boutiques and also online stores. Recently, my brand joined two new boutiques and we made hat designs that aren't available on our website. So they're like exclusively for those boutiques only. So that really felt like a like a huge achievement for me and my mom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and what was the, sorry, what was the boutique called? It's called Pink and Proper. I don't know. If... Ah, Pink and Proper. So you made... Yeah, they sell like swimwear and stuff. So ah, kind of ah. like a beach hat for them. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and how did they, how did the, that um, collaboration sort of happen? Um, they contacted me actually. Like one day, the owner just randomly said, "Oh, Topitan, I love your hat. So, do you wanna like display your hat at our boutique and blah blah blah?" So I was like, "Yes, yes, <laughs> yes." <laughs> and and was it like one of the first um I would say brands that sort of approached you to collaborate? Um, the first brand that start wait. It was a scrunchy brand called Munchy Skin. Mm. Yeah. The owner, um, her name was Zoe and she contacted me about the collab. And yeah, it was a really cute collab. <laughs> and so most of this company actually um, found you to Instagram, is it? Yes, that's mm. true. Mm. Mm. The power of Instagram. <laughs> true, the power of yeah, because you're only running your business to Instagram, right? At this moment. Yes, that's true. We have our website, but of course, only our Instagram customers know about the website at the moment. So you get more order to Instagram. Yes, only. that's true. Mm. Oh, mm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do you have any um sort of like idea collaboration that you sort of like thinking or oh, would oh. love to do it someday? I mean, of course, I want to like collaborate with like big, big names, but I don't know, maybe that won't happen in the near future, but hopefully, mm. hopefully that'll happen. Mm. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> we, we hope for the best. Um, yeah. So uh, since you, you said your mom was your role model, right? So, but can you also name one entrepreneur whom you admire and... And why, why would they, I mean, why they are an inspiration to you? Um, I'd say the one entrepreneur that I admire the most um, ever since I was like a student in college. Uh, I don't know if uh, you guys know him. His name is Dato Lat, also known as Lat the Cartoonist. Mm. Yeah, and I believe every Malaysian has seen or at least heard of Kampong Boy, which is Lat's most famous work. Yeah, he started publishing his cartoons when he was only 13, if I'm not wrong. 
which of course made him like an instant inspiration for all young artists and design and art students. So yeah, he illustrates like Malaysia's social scenes in a very comedic way. So I love that about him. Yeah. yeah. Someone also sat here, is their childhood. I think it's everyone's childhood. <laughs> Same. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, a, it's an instant connection and sort of like a ring yeah. back memories. And yeah, that's a, it's a really good, uh, what do you call it? I think also nice that he kind of make us remember like Malaysia. Mm, um, that's true. Like that's so true. Malaysia, like the authentic mm -hmm. stuff. You know? yeah, but yeah, it's true. And it's also it's funny. So. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I think I would just jump on to um, the last question I have for you. And I'm also curious from your point of view, since you also started your business quite young, um, <laughs> do you think uh, young people should start their own business and why? I do think young people should start their own business and I really do encourage it. It helps them gain not only business skills, but, but also like life skills, um, for example, time management. So yeah, it's really important that we gain these skills while we're still young and full of energy. So we can just fix certain parts while we're still growing. So yes, I do think young people should start their own business. I will support. You Go. must <laughs> <I> support. <laughs> <laughs> but it started spontaneously, right? I mean, yes. <laughs> Because I think a lot of people, when they think of starting a business, they sort of like start to overthink. And yeah, that's true. That's true. You, you should not think. You should just go for it. Just go for yeah. it. Go for it, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Fatin, thank you for your insight. Um, uh, we, will, uh, we will close the sharing session now, but we will move on to um, the Q&A. Uh, I think we have a few questions uh, that's pre-submitted and also we have some questions in the chat. Uh, but I will start off with the pre-submitted questions. Um, so uh, someone asks, do you manage your account by yourself? I think men Instagram. Um, and do you have um, do you have other workers who do it for you? <laughs> oh, yes, I do manage my account by myself. I took the photos, I handled the orders, I figure out like the captions, the posts and all. So it's pretty hard at the moment, I would say. Um, yeah, sometimes my eldest brother helps to like reply the customers and all. But yeah, right now I'm the one who handles everything. Wow, that's yeah. great. You can use yeah. um, make make most of your family members, right? I mean that's what siblings are for. That's true, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's not easy, right? To um Yeah, it's not easy. Here. Mm. especially you also use it as a main page to receive orders so uh, mm -mm. make sure you have to keep a very close eye to it yes mm. and um, I think the second question we have is where do you find your supplier for batik and who did I think we sort of touched upon this lah, but uh, maybe specifically you can share us more about the batik mm, our batik suppliers are from Kelantan and also Terengganu yeah, we don't like I said, like I said, we don't actually search for them. Sometimes they contact us directly. And yeah, <laughs> sometimes they contact us. Mm. We don't really search for them because um it's just hard to gain the trust among strangers, you know. So yeah. True. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think oh, someone was aware of your um, collaboration with Nyonya Kain. And oh. uh, yeah, I think uh, this person said, I saw that you did a collaboration with Nyonya Kain. How did you actually build that connection? And um, as a small business, how should an entrepreneur make collaborations? Mm. Um, I built that, how it, how it should be. I think Diana, um, she started like approaching, approached me first. So yeah, then we started like becoming friends and we meet each other and yeah, it just started like like completely out of the blue because like she sells batik also and I sell batik hat. So we just thought that yeah, the collaboration would be like so on point for our customers. So yeah, it was an interesting collaboration. And um, how should an entrepreneur make collaborations? I think you should just go for it 
although um you're like a small business or you're a huge business you should just go for it just dm that person like hey i want to collaborate with you and then just have uh, a plan in mind what you want to do for the collaboration channel and just tell that person yeah you should, you should just go for it don't just think twice yeah right be straight to the point yes mm. and i believe the um like the other person would be so happy as well so yeah just like how you felt when you'll be approached by brands yes yes yeah. that's true so i want people to feel that way as well <laughs> <laughs> So you actually done quite a few numbers of collaboration. Um, I would yeah. say so. I guess I think it's five, maybe or six around that. Mm. Yeah, and, and I you... love all of them so much. <laughs> That's amazing because you you have just I mean you started your business last year. Yes. So looking forward to see how much more collaboration you will topic ten will come in the yes. future. I'm looking forward for it too. <laughs> um, we have another question. Uh, are you guys planning to create other hats? Mm, good questions. I guess mm. planning to create other hats or caps instead of bucket hat or any other products? Um, probably not other products since um, we're <laughs> topping thin, so we're just sticking to toppy. But yeah, we're planning to make berries and also caps but um probably won't release it in the near future maybe by the end of the year maybe or next year yeah wow you should keep it <laughs> <Topic thing is laughs> <pending. laughs> great. don't pressure me but yeah <laughs> in in the in few months you can watch back this video and be like i said that now i have to make it happen <laughs> god that's so true but yeah, it will, it will, it will become a reality. Uh, oh yeah, I think, I think we, and then you complete a whole top 10, I mean, literally top 10 collections, like. <laughs> the whole top set. The whole top set, exactly. <laughs> the the one-stop place to find top right? <laughs> Hopefully one day. Yeah, one day. And then um, I think one last question we have is, um, what, What's your biggest fear as an entrepreneur? Oh, my biggest fear would be not, I guess, I don't know if this, like, if this is like deep or something, but I guess it's not being good enough for the customers, hmm. if you know what I mean. Like maybe they'll think, oh, um, why, why is she successful? Why, why does she made it and not us? Something like that. So yeah, that's, that's really my biggest fear until now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how do you? I guess I just have to be like positive about it, you know. Mm. Yeah. So how do you overcome when you have such, you know, fear? I just try. Like I said, I try to be really positive about it. I try mm. to just look at the bright side. I don't look. I don't really look at the negative comments. So yeah. I mean, I look at them. I try to fix them. But the ones who criticize, instead of just um telling me like feedback. I mm. don't really look at them. Yeah, the non-constructive. Um, yes, yes. Attacks. Yeah. <laughs> Especially as the social media, right? Everyone just yes, says. Yes, that's so true. Yeah, but did, were you were you mentally prepared for this? Like when you. Um, no, because like I said, like it started really out of nowhere. So mm. oh my god! So it started really out of nowhere. So yeah, I was. I was not like prepared for all the like all the attacks from everyone and all like um I would say like even someone I know just came to me and um wait why are you suddenly starting a business you didn't take um business in college and all so yeah so yeah. I was not actually prepared for any of this but yeah like I said the experience uh, is definitely the best teacher for me yeah we just like i want to start this just doing my own thing it is gonna <laughs> yeah that's true i just started because like i love selling my hats to like people who love them as well so yeah i just continued because of my customers great well i guess uh <laughs> fatin you have been very inspirational and sort of very bold 
Um, Thank, you. Thank you for your insight, Fatin. <laughs> um, so everyone, that was uh, Fatin from Topitin um, sharing her experience uh, at Talke Talks and brought to you by RISE and supported by City Foundation. So, um, so Fatin, thank you so much again. And I think you thank sort you. of proven and inspire, I, I hope, to many young people to sort of like, if you believe in an idea, to just go for it. And especially yeah. if you enjoy it. And I can see it that you genuinely enjoy making things. Um, and sort of like, so that comes first and then the business comes second. So that's, that's how you can sort of like manage it throughout the um, MCO, especially. Uh, yeah. So, and, and I think what my main takeaway from you is sort of how you were just so bold, like, just do it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yeah, everyone, everyone should have that mindset, actually. Yeah, Just go yeah. for it. Just go for it. Yeah, you, you are a, a strong risk taker, I would say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so everyone, if you have a dream and, um, you know, you, wanna, you want someone to hold accountable, just think of Atin when she said, oh. just... <laughs> yeah. So pressure, but yeah. Yeah, so yeah, thank you everyone. Um, so if you have uh, enjoyed this session, um, we have our next Take Talks uh, happening uh, at eight o'clock uh, next week, uh, next Wednesday. Uh, we have Kenny uh, from Bite Size Visual. Uh, we had the pleasure of actually being um, photo shoot. I mean, we had a photo shoot with Kenny for the Rice team. So we are quite excited to also invite Kenny um, as our guest next week. So if you're interested, you can sign up in the link uh, yeah, in the chat. And then also um, before uh, closing this, I would like to again um, promote our current uh, ongoing flagship program. Uh, so if you're interested to learn um, you know, uh, basic, uh, um, the basic of entrepreneurship um, or just generally curious um, or how to start a business, uh, this is a free course and we're open for all Malaysian and it's only until the um, 30th of July. And so, but, but for those who are 18 to 28 years old and you are eager to start your own business, we highly encourage you to take this course and then pitch in your business idea and we and get a chance to win um, uh, and to be coached by Rice Team and we can uh, help you to start your business um, up to 10,000 uh, ringgit. So that's all from me today and that's, um, and thank you so much, Fatin. And uh, for if you guys want to find out more about uh, our Talkie Talks and also check out our previous Talkie Talks, um, do follow us on Talkie Talks um, uh, uh, YouTube, Instagram, and also Facebook. Okay, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And thank you, Fatin. It has been a great pleasure. And I really enjoy <laughs> our conversation today. <laughs> Thank you for the positivity. <laughs> Thank you as well. I love talking. I love talking. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> I just talk a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you did amazing. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. So Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>